And welcome back to The Jason Show. She is our wine diva. She is our mistress of Merlot, our Chardonnay Chantreuse. Joining me literally, literally from about four <laughs> steps to the north, ladies and gentlemen, it's Leslie Miller, everyone. Hi, sweetheart. Hello. How are you? I'm well, because again, people, we, we joked about it before, Leslie and I, just full disclosure, I, I'm not joking, Leslie could probably throw some food from her window and I could catch it, right, Leslie? I could probably catch it on my window. It's true. I'll throw you some donuts. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so what is, uh, we always do a theme. We always, what, what is today's uh, theme today? You know, we need to talk about our moms, Jake. We do. You know, Mom's Day is coming up and people are constantly asking me what's the perfect gift for Mother's Day. Of course, you know, you can always buy her wine because lots of moms called me telling me to tell their kids to buy them some wine. Well, I let me start. I You know me. I like to start with a compliment and it just, just popped in my mind. I have to tell you again, and we mentioned that the last time you were here, uh, Colin went and bought uh, some wine for one of his best, 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 best friends, Carrie's birthday. And he was like, look, this, he goes, I'm not just saying this because we love Leslie and Leslie's on the show, but that was so cool. He goes, the, the friend loved it and props to you. He was loving the interface of your website. Basically like, can you kind of explain before we get into this, um, yeah. Because this is, as you said, this is the gift buying time for mom. Right. Your website is broken up like, well, you explained it, how you ask people questions to determine what kind of wine they should buy. Yeah. So, you know, my second company, Sip Better, that you're speaking of, really morphed out of my first company, Amuse. So Amuse, I, I have been for 20 plus years standing in front of people, you know, teaching classes as a sommelier, getting to know people, their palates. And people are always asking me about healthy wine. You know, how do I select wine for my palate? Uh, you know, I go to a retail store and I never really know what to buy. I buy things based on label. So I started Sip Better. And Sip Better, I literally had joined 50 plus wine clubs all over the country uh, because it was always, when I got to the wine club aspect of it, I really wanted to align something that worked for somebody's individual palate versus just cool wines that I'm sending you that maybe you don't even really like. They're wines that I like, but you might not like. So we start with, you know, pick a tasting kit from one of three selections that you see at Sip Better under our Get Started page. And I've literally categorized uh, wine drinkers into three different areas. So one, it's called Let It Rip. It's called the Wine Jedi, actually. You just let me pick you, you know, four wines. We'll see where we go from there. Or you're the person who says you're super adventurous and you're always the person that's looking for a different grape, a different region. You're totally nerdy by nature when it comes to grapes and wine. Or the last one is um, the bigger, the better. And that's generally the person who loves really big, beefy whites and reds. So basically you start, and this is, kind of where Mother's Day comes into play because everybody's looking to give an experience right now, right? Something that you can yeah. do at home that would be fun. And that's what Sip Better is all about. So literally you can gift off one of these tasting kits to, you know, your mom or somebody else. And you literally pick what kind of wine drinker you think they are. You let me pick them. And that's what Colin did and just loved it. Loved the whole thing. Well, yeah. that brings us that brings us right to the parking lot of Mother's Day. What do we have in front of you there, Leslie? Well, I have a bunch of rosé because moms love rosé. And on our shop page section, I have a whole rosé all day uh, shop page where literally you can send mom a bunch of rosés. However, we're also teaching all these virtual wine classes, as you know, for the last couple of months, and they are crazy. People from all over the country, parts of Canada are joining us for all of these classes because they're only 10 bucks a class. And we have an entire class devoted to rosé. 
And um, I've had a lot of friends reach out to me and say, I just really want to do something fun for my mom. Um, I'm going to gift her a class with you so that she and I can take them, obviously, from their own living rooms. But then they can hang out and drink rosé online and little and learn a little bit while they're doing it. I love that. So these are three that are – what What are you – I'm jealous. I wish I should just run over to your house. So what's uh, <laughs> what's what's one of your favorites right there? So I, you know, I'm just a giant fan of rosé all year round because rosé really does go with so many different types of cuisine, things that you're eating, whether you're vegan, vegetarian, you're into poultry, you name it. And literally, you just have to think of rosés as lighter versions of grapes that you already love. So you can have a Pinot Noir rosé, you can have a Tempranillo rosé. This is Nebbiolo. Um, it's a grape actually that lives in Northwest Italy. But what I love about it is it's kind of grippy. It's really acidic. Um, you drink it, and all you want to do is just sit at sit at home and eat, you know, cheese and charcuterie, olives, those kind of things. It's just perfect, obviously, for Mother's Day. Okay, the next one. So these guys all really kind of have, this is a little uh, little one from Chile here. And this is one thing that we don't always think about, but Chile is, because they're in the Southern Hemisphere, they're ahead of where everybody else is sending their rosés in. So we were getting the Chilean rosés in January, February, whereas European countries are starting to send them to us now. So you usually get grapes that are anywhere between Pinot Noir, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet, uh, Merlot, Malbec, and they're a little bit more rich and more intense, sometimes a little bit spicy. Um, and then, of course, you can go with the traditional uh, Provence style rosé, which is kind of where I don't want to say rosé was invented, but it became very, very popular with the kings um, of old uh, in France. So Provence rosés are still very much in fashion. And correct me if I'm wrong. So and we, we've covered this, I think, years ago on the show. Rosés were really hip for a while. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't the 80s, Leslie? It was, they, they, they had a surge and then they became really passé. And it was like, then the wine snobs kind of went rosé and yeah. then they came back and it seems like they haven't left. They have, they're still at the party. Am I right on this? <laughs> yeah, they've really gotten to be a very big topic. You know, rosés were invented literally a couple hundred years ago, but the reason why we started drinking rosé in the United States is because white Zinfandel came along and white Zinfandel, like I not, I can't ever be too mad at it because it's really what got this country actually drinking wine just in general. And it was pink. And so people thought of it as being rosé, even though white Zinfandels were really born sweet. And so, yeah, in the 70s and 80s, you know, our moms were definitely hanging out, you know, drinking lots of white Zinfandel there along the sweeter style. Now My I mom did. Dar yeah. loved the white Zen. Yeah, exactly. Don't, I mean, don't get me wrong. My mom is still drinking lots of white Zen, right? I always say, hey, she's drinking grape juice, so I can't be, you know, I'm all about it. Exactly. So, you know, but they were sweet. And, you know, from a sophisticated side, you know, some would say that, oh, it's not as, you know, beautiful and elegant as a dry rosé. And I think, you know, folks, unfortunately, in the wine industry, again, I don't look at it that way because if people are drinking wine, that means I still have a job. Um, it doesn't matter what color or style it is to me or even price point to me. Um, but, yeah, I think White Zinfandel was kind of getting this uh, – yeah, it was sort of along the lines of like yellowtail, not super high quality driven. So people were like, eh, you can't, you can't. PB, remember, PB used to call it blush. Yeah, blush. <laughs> yes. Blush. I just watched a Golden Girls episode where they order blush. And <laughs> Dallas, Miss Ellie orders blush. I'm like, what the hell is blush? You at the Maybelline counter? <laughs> Sue Allen was drinking so much blush. Yeah, there was so much blush going on. But then, you know, it kind of came back around in the last 10 years where people are like, hey, look, every country out there produces a dry rosé. Um, and then it really became in fashion. I, I think I own at least 15 articles of clothes that have some type of rosé saying on them now, you know, because rosé all day as a hashtag came back. And then the millennials really kind of drove sales up again in the way of dry roses. So now you see them all over the place. Well, usually we're blaming them for things. Now we can say, 
Thank you, millennials. Thank you for say for keeping rosé on the shelves. That's right. Okay, amusewine.com. Follow mm -hmm. Leslie. Uh, sip. It's sip better, right, Leslie? Sip that's better correct. as well. Yep, that's right. Yep. Here we go. The two places you can find the great Leslie Miller. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this.